Okay, what's up guys and welcome back. Today, we're editing a full image. I drank an energy drink and have a lot of energy, so let's just jump right into this because we don't have time to lose. A little bit too high energy, Evan, just cool it. Okay, so let's pop into this screen in front of me that you can't see. Okay, so here's the image in question. Um, you can see that it's clearly much, much different than the two images we have here. Um, <clears throat> I've, I decided this image would be pretty good for this because I did use a good bit of like editing techniques and cool stuff that you can see in here that I did to really make this image pop. Um, so yeah, let me show you what I did to get to this image or something similar. So this would be a great tutorial on editing <clears throat> in this type of style. Um, obviously you can build from there and create your own style. I think this is going to be a good starting point. Okay. So first I have to preface this by saying that normally when I shoot these kind of images, I shoot one single image. I'll use like a graduated filter to kind of hold in that light in the sky. Um, in this instance, I didn't have my filters with me because I'm very, very forgetful. And so I kind of just bracketed real quick. Uh, normally you'd probably want to do more than <clears throat> two image brackets, but I wasn't 100% sure if I even liked the idea of bracketing. So I kind of, uh, I kind of just did two. I exposed for the foreground and the sky. So yeah, that's what these two images are. You can see there's the sky, there's the foreground. Um, you can do this, like I said, it's called bracketing. Uh, the way I do it is I'll just shoot. Well, it doesn't matter. You, you can figure it out on your own. We're not gonna talk about that. But yeah, so here's the two images. So the first thing I'm gonna do with these two images is I'm going to select them both, select them both, <clears throat> right click and I'm going to go to photo merge and we're going to click HDR and that's going to essentially just merge these photos together to uh, give us the highs and lows that we want. It's not necessarily an HDR image uh, because HDR images are, uh, in my eyes, I think a little bit overdone. Um, yeah, I don't know. You can see this This looks really HDR-y right now. Uh, we really don't want it to look like that. We're going to fix that though in post by dropping shadows and we'll, you'll see. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave all these settings like this. You can see this is like the ghost and stuff. It's all gonna be clouds because I just shot on a tripod. Um, <clears throat> we're not gonna go too much into detail with this because like I said, I don't want this video to be super long. So we're just gonna click merge. It's gonna auto align, and do all the uh, settings that we need it to do. Okay, so here we have that image. Like I said, it looks very HDR-y and we don't like that look. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of look through my settings. Sorry about my mic. Uh, I'm just going to kind of look through these settings. Um, I'm probably going to leave the temperature and tint alone for right now. Uh, exposure, I'm probably going to drop just a little tiny bit like that. Uh, you can type it in. I'm just sliding because um, I'm not trying to do this perfect. Um, I like the highlights where they are. Uh, shadows, like I said, I'm, I'm definitely going to drop these a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the shadows. Like I said, it's going to be underexposed. And I'm actually going to paint in light. That's something I like to do. Um, so you'll see that uh, this white and black's balanced good, so we won't even touch that. Uh, I am going to add a, probably like 10 plus 10 clarity to this. Uh, I'm a huge fan of clarity. If that's not something you like and you don't like that look, um, then don't do it. Uh, you can see that's like kind of an overdramatic effect. It's super contrasty and punchy. And if you take it away, that's where it gets like blurry and weird. Uh, we talked about that kind of in that uh, paintbrush tutorial where we did smooth skinning. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna set that right about there. I'll leave the vibrant saturation right there. Uh, so for your uh, tone curve, what I typically like to do is I'll add a point here in the middle, a point up here in between the highlights and shadows, and then one down here too. And I'll kind of just, I don't want to mess with the, sh the highlights too much. So I'm probably just going to leave it like this. Uh, we'll, we'll brighten it up a little bit. It's too much. So right about there. And then I am going to drop the shadows and give us like more contrast in our shadows like that and I'm going to give it kind of like a muted look by bringing this so you can see that is really gonna mute it out. I'm just gonna do it a little tiny bit just to give it a little bit. And I know you're probably thinking, wow, and this image looks horrible, but I promise by the end of this, it's gonna look legit. Uh, okay, so next thing we're gonna do is, 
I'm going to, I think I'm gonna drop this slot. Yeah, I wanna make my greens a little bit more on the yellow side. Uh, that's just a look I, lo I lo like. Um, yeah, I like that look. And I'm probably actually going to desaturate them a bit just to give it like, I just think that looks better. Um, yellows, uh, you can play around with this a little bit. Maybe give it a little bit more of a, like an orange type look. I'm actually probably going to desaturate these yellows just a bit and we're gonna probably add that back in with a radial filter. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. I might bump these, the green luminance up just a little bit. Um, yeah, I like the way that looks so far. Um, like I said, it's going to pop once we paint in that light. So we're gonna go through and do everything first and then, uh, yeah. Okay, so for sharpening, um, I typically just eyeball this. Uh, so whatever you think looks good, uh, you can kind of see, uh, well, right where it was was actually not bad. Put it around like 60, whatever. Um, yeah, you, you'll, that's, all gonna be preference in terms of your sharpness. It depends on if you shot the image uh, correctly, maybe you put it out of focus a little bit and you wanna sharpen it up, uh, you can do that there. So I'm just gonna leave it right about there. Um, I am going to mask this sky. Oh, and by the way, the way I'm doing this, oh, the wrong thing. Uh, if you're on Mac option, I think it's control on PC, I'm not 100% sure. But that'll give you this like white line and then you can see as I drag this slider up, uh, it's going to show me what's actually being sharpened. That's the mask. Uh, you kind of want to take it away from the sky as much as possible. Those clouds are really, really uh, sharp. So you'll probably leave it like right about there. Yeah, so you don't, you typically don't want your uh, sky to be like over sharpened because then it just looks weird. So right about there is good for me. Um, obviously we want to remove chromatic abrasion. That's like that like purplish tinge kind of thing that looks uh, like you'll see it around like trees and stuff like leaves if you shoot into the sun uh, if you have a, like a cheaper camera too you'll see that a lot so Lightroom automatically can remove most of that sometimes it doesn't work that great but it's a nice thing to do I always make sure to turn that on and then profile corrections I'm gonna do too that's just like if you shoot something and it gives it kind of like a uh, like a vignetting I guess yeah like a vignetting, it'll fix that and make it look more even and flat. Um, yeah, so you always pretty much are gonna wanna turn that on. Uh, you can add in vignetting anyways after the fact. So if you do like the vignetting, just I would just always correct the profile like that and then just in post fix it. Um, I'm not gonna level this because I kind of like the way it looks. I know that that horizon looks weird kind of, but it's a, it's a hill. So we don't really have a flat horizon. And this line's pretty straight. And like I said, I like the way the path's kind of like leading you through the image. So I'm gonna leave that as is. I'm not gonna level that at all. Um, I'm not, I don't, well, maybe I'll, I might add just like four, negative four. Oh, this is another cool thing. If you are adding vignetting, negative is gonna be your dark vignetting. And then plus is going to be your like weird white, like, I feel like I see this in like baby photos and stuff. I don't know, I've never used that before in my entire life. So yeah, I'm just gonna add like a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of vignetting to that. Um, the reason I, I want, the bottom is gonna like lead you to the top. So I'm gonna actually use like a radial filter to darken this more once it's like lit up a little bit more. I might actually up the exposure a bit too. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. I don't want those highlights to be too, well, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my radial filter and I'm going to just pop that right over the sun here. I just want that to kind of light up the sky. Like I said, we desaturated those yellows a bit, so we're gonna add those back in and oranges. Uh, and I kind of want to make it look like it's catching that uh, like little valley floor there. So I'm gonna just bump this exposure up just a little tiny. Oh, also, you're, this is automatically gonna come in uh, in not inverted so it's gonna be everything outside the radial just come down here and click invert and that'll do everything inside the radial filter um, so yeah I just, I'm just gonna bump this exposure up just a little tiny tiny bit and then I'm gonna turn up the temperature a, just a little bit just to bring it back to where it was so you can see that kind of just brighten everything up gave the orange back right on the money okay Next, I'm going to do a graduated filter. And like I said, I'm going to just bring it up here, 
And I'm just gonna play around with this. A lot of this is just gonna be trial and error. Um, I mean, I, I already edited this image, so I'm just kind of going by what I did originally. It's not gonna probably look the exact same, but it'll give you a good idea of like things I do do. And obviously, I said do do. <laughs> oh God, I am such a child. But yeah, you're going to, uh, this is like a good stepping stone. And I know I've said that in a lot of videos, but that's really what this is. Um, you know, you can watch people edit videos and you can take their presets and stuff as much as you want. But if you don't know what you're doing and sit down and actually practice this stuff, you know, you're never going to actually be able to edit your own images. You're always going to be copying after someone else's. So uh, these are great ways to learn, but you're going to want to take this and kind of learn, see what you like. You know, you might hate this look. You, know, you might like like the crazy over edited look. You might like photoshopping and birds and stuff. That's not my style, um, but it might be yours. So I don't know why I was on that tangent, but yeah, so I'm gonna add this gradial, gradial for, uh, gradient filter. I'm probably also going to slap another one. Excuse me, right here. Just drop that exposure just a little tiny bit. And yeah, so that's looking pretty sweet. So what we're gonna wanna do next is Oh, you know what, actually, before I do any more editing, let me show you something, because this is driving me nuts. I don't know if you noticed this. There was like, I gotta get my lenses cleaned. But <laughs> you can see, this is a great, great example of learning how to fix this kind of stuff. Uh, if you're trying to submit to maybe like, uh, like micro stocks or something, the second they see this kind of thing, they're gonna instantly nix your photo and tell you you have to fix it. So, super easy fix. You don't even have to do it in Photoshop or anything. You can do it all in Lightroom. Uh, you just come up, grab this tool right here. I don't even know what this is called, the spot removal tool. And uh, this is, oh, actually let me show you something else you can do. So when I do this, like this one's obviously super easy to see, but sometimes you can't see those spots as easy. So what I'll do is I'll bump this dehaze all the way up and it makes your image look terrible for a second, but we're gonna change it back. And then you can start to see there's some spots coming out. So we're just gonna come in here and click these away. So we did that, I zoom out, I'm going to just double click the dehaze again, it's going to reset that. So now you can see that's not up there anymore, it looks much, much better. Uh, yeah, that looks better. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab our brush tool. And then I'm just gonna customize it and just up our exposure, probably like 0.20. And I'm going to, you can, I don't know, I don't know what the controls are for a PC, but if you like two finger drag, you can change the scale of this. Um, I think there's another way too. Oh yeah, right here. Your brush size right here. You can change like this and like the feathering and stuff and density and all that stuff. If you're familiar with Photoshop, it's the exact same thing. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna come in here and paint this exposure in. And we're just gonna paint this little pathway thing. And you can see that's kind of making it just pop a little bit. We might up the exposure a little bit more. I'm gonna brush some in here too. And then I'm gonna just, yeah, kind of like right about there. You can see now that's kind of popping. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make this two separate brushes. I'm gonna take this out because that one's a little bit brighter for some reason. I'm gonna come in here and just make a new brush. And I'm going to, so actually I think, man, I might, yeah, I'm gonna warm this up just a little tiny bit. When we were there, it was crazy, crazy bright. Um, didn't really capture it in the image, which I was kind of surprised. Um, see, that was the original raw file. See, like I said, this is all gonna be trial and error. There's no like perfect way to do this. I'm kind of just going in here and seeing what I like. So what I'm doing now is, I know the light's coming from this way, from up in the sky. So like these back sides of these bushes, I'm just darkening up a little bit to give it like some contrast because obviously these aren't gonna have as much light on them as the forward facing bushes. I'm gonna darken these just a little bit. Like I said, you're just gonna kind of go in here and feel around for what feels right. Um, I only edited this once, so I'm just, like I said, I'm just doing it over again. Um, probably also gonna go in here, fix this radial filter, make it a little bit bigger. Um, I'm probably gonna bump the exposure up a bit too, and then warm it up just a little bit more. 
So yeah, you can see that's like the changes we're making already. Oh, you know what also I want to do is I want to, I like to make my blues less blue and more like aqua. So I'm going to drop this down. You can see it's not going to really affect it too much because the blues are like already desaturated from the sun um, in the image I took. So I'm going to drop those down to like more of a cyan and then I'm probably going to, yeah, I'll, I'll saturate those a little bit more just to give it some more cool color in the sky. Now I want to give it more of like a surreal feel and that's why I'm painting in color or uh, exposure. I think that's a good look. I also think I'm gonna bump this clarity up a little bit more. So you can see uh, if you click the uh, backslash or the straight down thingy on your keyboard, that'll give you your before and then your current. And that looks, that's looking pretty good. Uh, you can see I added a little bit more shadow, a little bit more darkness, um, but I kind of like where our image is. Probably would just add a little strip of just on this hillside because that hillside's not catching all that light. So remember, you, you're working with what the sun is giving you. Um, oh, okay, sorry about that. My camera ran out of space. I totally forget what I was saying. But you're, it, it really is just trial and error. You're gonna wanna play around with this a bunch, see what feels right to you. Like To me, I feel like this should be a little bit darker, like that. Um, that kind of leads your eye. Like What I'm trying to do is create you want to draw the whoever's viewing the image. You want to make their eye do something. Like you don't want them to just look at an image and not know where their eye's supposed to go. So for me, when I look at this image, it's leading me down that path to that tree line, and then obviously to that sunset. Um, so that's like kind of the feel I'm going for. That's why I'm darkening this. Kind of just takes your eye through the image. Um, I don't know. That's my thought process. Uh, that's pretty much my edit for this. Yeah, I think that was pretty cool. Um, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you did enjoy it, click the like, the thumbs up button, and please subscribe. I'm at like 68 subscribers or something like that. Uh, 69 would be really nice. Um, 100 would be even better. Um, I, th I was thinking about doing, I do like uh, on my, if you are on my Facebook page, I've done like giveaways for like prints and stuff. I was thinking about maybe doing something like that. Um, I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments. I have another vlog coming out probably either end of this week or next week. Um, more tips coming. But yeah, I wanted to get this one out there because I feel like it kind of flows with the previous vlog. And yeah, so that's about it for me, guys. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.